If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. By the way, DraftKings Sportsbook has an unbelievable free-to-play NFL schedule game on the DraftKings app, free-to-play NFL schedule pool. So certainly check that out. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years, bunch of podcasts. We have been on a roll lately. Micah Parsons late last week. We had Matt Nagy, the head coach of the Chicago Bears, yesterday on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Greg Cosell will join us tomorrow on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. And then Thursday, Michael North, VP of Scheduling for the National Football League. And that is what our primary focus will be today. The NFL schedule comes out tomorrow night, and we have the only two-time winner of the Super Bowl of professional football betting, Steve Fezzik. He dominated the Westgate Casino back-to-back years, and he's going to dominate letting you know what you need to know when the schedule comes out. Check him out at Fezzik Sports and only at Fezzik Sports. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. We will get into some NBA stuff. I got to get Steve's take on this guy, Bob Baffert, a little bit later. Maybe he's even got something on the NHL playoffs. But we're going to dive first, hot and heavy, Steve, into the NFL schedule. How are you, my friend? I am excellent, Ross. NFL 24-7, 365 days a year now. All right, so we sort of talked about this. When we did our first glance at the season win totals a few weeks ago, and of course, this is a podcast. You can check it out on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. But you can always go back. And Steve and I just did our first look at, this is before the draft, by the way, at that feels right, a little high, a little low. We like to kind of take the temperature of the season win totals a few times before making our official bets in August. So for the people that missed that episode a couple weeks ago, Steve, what's the most important item or piece of information they need to be aware of as it relates to the schedule going from 16 games to 17? Yeah, so the AFC teams pick up one extra home game. So advantage AFC. So all the NFC teams now having to play nine games um, are up against it. And frankly, when the schedule comes out tomorrow, Ross, there's going to be some NFC teams. You're going to see some very challenging travel schedules. I'll make the case probably the most challenging that we've ever seen for one select team because of the unbalanced NFL schedule of the 17-game season. You know, there's really no way it's not, right? I mean, this will be the first time that they have more away games than home. So there's really not a way to do it where they don't have something like three in a row on the road or – four out of five or whatever. I mean, you know, their job, and this is what Michael North will talk about on Thursday's Ross Tucker Football Podcast, they want to keep it fair and balanced, Steve, but this is pro football, right? They're trying to maximize the television ratings, and if a team has to play three in a row on the road or four out of five, I don't think they're going to cry about it. Yeah, what will be interesting is that, you know, I have, I'm not – even privy yet to whether there's going to be any international games this year. Um, have those been all canceled? Or- they just it, uh, good timing. There's going to be two. The Jaguars are hosting one. The Falcons are hosting one. They'll both be in London. There's no Mexico City game, but the Falcons and Jags will both be hosting only two international games, both in London. Falcons host one. Jags host the other, which means, Steve, the Falcons have seven home games and 10 away from Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. 
Yeah, very big challenge for Atlanta. And what's interesting is Atlanta has been a darling for the Sharps to bet on on the season wins. The Sharps love the fact they didn't take a quarterback. They're not rebuilding. They went with Pitts, the tight end. So the Atlanta total got bet up from seven to seven and a half. All the momentum has been positive for the Falcons. I think that may well change when we take a good look at that schedule when it comes out tomorrow. You know, it's a really good point. Even just on that, I mean, Steve, nine away, one neutral site, and seven home. That's the worst any team's ever had. And by the way, that's the worst any team ever will have. And think about it. It's not just that you've got to play two more road games. It's the cumulative impact of the extra travel and the wear and tear of that that can really train wreck your season. Ross, I know you played so many different teams, so many different seasons. Do you ever recall one season in particular where it seemed like you're always traveling, your plane was always delayed, and you were just dog tired by week 13? Well, I do remember, Steve, the years where we played the AFC West or the NFC West. You know, that was our conference. I, I absolutely remember that. I remember 2004 with the Buffalo Bills, we had to play at the Seattle Seahawks, at the San Francisco 49ers. We hosted the then St. Louis Rams, and we hosted the then Arizona Cardinals. But we had to go out to Seattle, out to San Francisco. Uh, we also played – was that the year we played at Oakland? Yeah, we played at Oakland that year as well. They were on the AFC side. So we had a bunch of cross-country West Coast trips that year. And I think that's probably why it stands out to me. Yeah, and it really takes a toll on you. Heck, I just remember having traveled out to the Super Bowl to Atlanta – and to Miami, how by the time I got home, Ross, I, I was fried, you know, just one cross-country trip and doing my work. So imagine what it does to you as a professional athlete if you have to do it three or four times in a season. It's a really, really good point. Okay, so we already have a couple nuggets that people need to know about. Number one is the AFC team having the extra home game. We knew about that, but Atlanta – I mean, is that enough, Steve? Now that the season win total has gone up to seven and a half, is that enough for you to take the under? I think it's a pass. I wanted to play over, but there's no way I'm playing into this bad situation. The two cancel each other. I'm going to pass on the Falcons. Because the other thing is, Steve, it's not like they're the Jags and they're kind of used to playing in London. This will be like a first-time thing for the Falcons. Yeah, Jacksonville absolutely – got better and better on their road trips to London, figuring it all out and the best way to do it. And because of that, I would make the case they've got a bigger edge home field-wise playing in London than they do playing in Jacksonville. So that's a, a, a big edge for them. But any other team, I don't think that there's really any benefit of being the home team at all. Have you been putting a lot of money in on the Jags over now that they're going to sign Tebow? <laughs> well, you know, that's why I was unavailable yesterday is that I had to like go ahead and unload the, the checking account. Now, you know, the popularity and of this Tebow and the discussion, obviously, he doesn't move the needle at all. You could make the case he moves the needle negatively because, hey, if I've been a guy that's been working my butt off for a team for years and now all the media wants to do is talk to this Tebow guy, failed baseball player. Give me a break. It, it really is unbelievable how when his name is mentioned, I mean, just the sheer Q rating that that young man has is very, very impressive. Okay, so let's get into the NFL schedule. Hardcore now. It's being released tomorrow night. You and I... We'll go ahead and we will react to it next week once we actually see it and have it. What matters and what doesn't? So let's start, Steve. I mean, you're the two-time Super Contest winner. What matters? What, what matters to you on a team's schedule? Thursday games. You want to be the home team. Home team has a marked 
advantage with the short prep week because the road team obviously loses a day essentially having to travel. So any team that has to have any significant travel, especially a non-division game on the road for a Thursday game, that's a big negative. Want to look to um, put a big, um, you know, a red check mark for bad by that team. Uh, bye weeks. Don't want to play a, a bunch of teams off of their bye weeks. That's a disadvantage. So want to go ahead and track. Um, and just in general, track how many times a team has to play a team with extra rest versus short rest. So extreme example, you want to look to back a team that plays a Thursday night game, then plays Monday night against um, uh, a team that just played on Sunday, more prep time. But um, the worst case scenario is you get a team plays Monday night football, then has to wheel back and play on a Sunday or even a Saturday late in the year with that short rest. That's a team you usually want to put another little red check mark disadvantage in that game. Okay, so Thursday night road team, that's a ding. Um, Playing a lot of teams coming off the bye, that's a ding. And we're really talking season win total here. Anything else that's a blatant, uh, you know, downgrade in terms of how you feel about a team and their ability to hit the over for their season win total. Anything else that jumps out? Fire and ice. Look at the December games. Do you have a team from the north, the far north, playing a team in California or Florida? So if Miami has to travel to Buffalo, obvious big advantage to whoever's home in that game in December. Uh, Does Houston have to go to Chicago? In December, things like that, games like that can be a huge challenge, especially the warm weather team traveling to the cold in December. Okay, so then the flip side, I guess, Steve, unless you have any, do you have any more? Can I move on to the next thing? One more week 17. You want you you want to play a juggernaut. You want to play Tampa Bay or Kansas City week 17 because there's certainly a chance that that team will have wrapped up everything in terms of playoff seeding, and now you get to play against the spare parts of that team. Ooh. So, okay. So that that makes sense to me, Steve. But are you going to really place a bet based upon that? Like, I I, everything, what you just said makes sense to me. But you're going to see a team playing the Bucs or the Chiefs in Week 17, and we already know they're playing them. But because it's Week 17, is that enough? that you would place a bet on their season win total, or is it just one more slight upgrade or downgrade? One more slight upgrade or downgrade. I actually take out a green pen and a red pen, and I do little checks. Green is good, red is bad for a team in each one of these games. One that'll help me when that game's actually going to be played in terms of how I want to bet it, but two, I'm looking for a team with a whole bunch of red check marks, a whole bunch of difficult travel Certainly cumulative miles is bad also. The more you have to travel back and forth across the country, the worse off you are. So the more, when I get a slew of red check marks, that's usually a team I'm going to look to bet against in terms of their season wins. Okay, so then let's get to the flip side. What doesn't matter? Because we're going to hear a lot of people talking about different things tomorrow night and Thursday morning after the schedule comes out, what are people going to talk about and make it seem like it matters, but it doesn't matter? I think stretches of difficult games towards the second half of the year, the media will oftentimes say, oh, that's a really horrible stretch. They have like week 10 through 14. I think the only time it really matters to have, when you have a slew of really difficult games is when you have a marginal team that's not supposed to be all that good and they have those games early in the year. Because think about it, it can train wreck your season. If you're the Arizona Cardinals, you're an average team. You're supposed to win eight or eight and a half games. You have a very difficult schedule. If you get that front loaded and you have to play all those difficult games, say weeks two through eight, well, if you wake up two and six, your season's basically done. You're in last place in a really tough division. And all of a sudden, you're thinking about rebuilding, evaluating talent, and winning is not the number one priority. Certainly, you're not going to look to make trades to upgrade your team if that's the case. So I would pay a lot of attention to teams in terms of 
is their schedule front loaded or back loaded? Much better to have the it is better to have the difficult games in the second half of the year, especially look for look at a team like the Bears. If the Bears start slowly, it's easy to for them to say come week seven, you know what, we'll just see what we have with Trace Fields. He doesn't give us our best chance of winning, but um let's see what what we can do in terms of development of him. So there's a team that could absolutely see the wheels come off if they have a very difficult early schedule. Anything else that doesn't matter? I mean, I guess on some level, I'll, I mean, I, I feel like I'm with you on the uh, stretches, especially because, you know, there's so many injuries, Steve, and so many teams end up being not what we thought that a lot of times, you know, you'll see a stretch that looks like it's hard, that then the season comes around and it wasn't nearly as hard as you thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's a good point that um, – Ideally, you want to play the really good teams later in the year also because they may not turn out to be as good if they have a slew of injuries, if their quarterback goes down. One thing for sure, you don't want to play Tampa or Kansas City or Buffalo weeks one, two, three, four. But by week 11, one of those teams might not be that good because of injuries or other reasons. So that's a good point as well. Ultimately, I want to emphasize who you play is still more important than all these circumstances. Your overall strength of schedule is going to be a more important factor than these nuances and specifics of the schedule. But those other aspects certainly are significant. Okay. So I guess here's the next question, Steve, before we get into some of his other stuff, will you bet tomorrow night, like when that schedule comes out, will you dissect it and place some bets or do you need more time to review it? I guess, you know, we talk often about getting the better of the line, getting the line earlier in the week, getting the better lines, you know, so that you get closing line value. Are there things that you'll see that you will bet tomorrow night or is it not that significant or it's just not, it won't happen that quickly for you? There's certain teams that different sports books have different opinions on Ross. The Detroit lions are an example if you want to play the Lions, you can play over five, basically, at even money. You can play under five, basically, at even money if you shop around. It's a no-vig bet. So here's the Lions, a team I probably want to bet under. But if I get any confirmation that they get dealt a bad hand in terms of the schedule, I'll fire now on the Lions. I'm this close to betting it now, and I'm thinking, eh, may as well wait one more day. So the Lions will be one of the first teams I'll be looking at the specifics of their schedule. Got it. Um, I don't know. Will they come out with – we? I wonder when DraftKings and, and some of these other books will come out with the week one lines. Any of them come out with them like tomorrow night or shortly thereafter? Varies by book. Uh, DraftKings oftentimes does a tremendous job getting product up quickly. I remember the day after the draft, boom, up comes passing yards for uh, – for the you know the one and two picks for Lawrence and for Wilson in terms of how many yards they're going to throw for you can bet over or under literally the morning after the first day of the draft so those are virgin lines and it's you against the bookmaker oftentimes you against one or two people at the bookmaker I like making bets in situations like that the longer you wait it becomes you against the entire world wisdom of crowds after the numbers get hammered in place. I'm going to tweet this probably tomorrow, Steve, at Ross Tucker NFL. But what do you think we'll hear more of tomorrow? Fans complaining that the NFL is out to get their team or people talking about strength of schedule that have no idea what they're talking about or how to calculate it? I think fans complaining. <laughs> I think everybody feels they get rooked by the system and the like. You do mention the strength of schedule. Very important. We've reviewed it before. There's three ways to do strength of schedule. The wrong way is to take a look at your opponents and look at how many games they won last year. We don't care that the Pittsburgh Steelers won 12 games last year. It doesn't matter the number they won. The Pittsburgh Steelers are an average football team. So we shouldn't look at Pittsburgh's record last year and say, that's a really tough game if I have to play the Steelers. So, what you want to do, ideally, is look at how good teams are this year. Now, 
a pretty good way, back of the envelope way to do that is just to look at a team's overall season wins and say, all right, Tampa Bay is supposed to win 11 and a half games. They're an 11 and a half season win team. And you can just add up all your opponents, how many games they're, um, they're supposed to win and rank those teams. And that'll give you a pretty darn solid strength of schedule for the upcoming year. Now, if you really want to be 100% spot on, instead of doing it that way, you should really look at the power rating associated with each and every one of your 17 opponents and sum that power rating to get down to how strong your schedule actually is. But the difference between those two methods is not going to be very far apart. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like people just love to complain and say the NFL is out to get their team. It makes me laugh. Um, look, Mike North will be on Thursday's Raw Sucker Football Podcast. He, he makes no bones about it, Steve. They're trying to maximize TV ratings, period. Like, they're trying to keep it balanced, but everybody wants a week 10 buy. Everybody wants this. Everybody wants that. Nobody wants to play teams coming off of a buy. Like, it just it just doesn't work that way. Um, some other things I wanted to ask you. I know last week you talked about Aaron Rodgers a little bit. How, how have people been betting that right now? So all the Green Bay odds for season wins and divisional odds are off the board. So you can't bet, the, certainly can't bet the season wins, and it makes sense. With Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay is about an 11-win team. Without him, they should be about a six-and-a-half-win team. Too much of a difference. The books feel too exposed. Many of the books kept the futures odds up on Green Bay at around 15-to-1, figuring, ah, eh, I'm not going to get hurt too bad with that. But the difficulty here, when we're doing strength of schedule, what do I do with the Vikings? They got two games against Green Bay. How do I wait how good Green Bay is? Well, I'd say right now, if I just set a, a season win number for Green Bay, maybe I'd make it nine. I'd split the difference between the 11 and the six and a half and say it's slightly more likely Rodgers returns. But it's close to 50-50. So those are going to be two easy games for the Vikings or two very difficult games. You can see the problem. One thing for sure the Vikings schedule just became a lot easier than what it was last month. I did bet the Vikings over eight and a half wins. I bet the Vikings to win the division plus 350. What about uh, what about the Raiders? I know you had something on the Raiders. You mentioned them last week too. So the Raiders are the one team. I've got a spreadsheet here. It's got NFL that's got the season wins of three prominent books, including DraftKings. And there's such a difference in opinion on my Las Vegas Raiders, DraftKings, seven wins. You can play over seven right now. Lay a dollar ten. There are spots in Vegas you can get eight. Now, a little bit of a big difference. You got to go under lay a dollar thirty. That never happens, Ross. You never see a full game differential being dealt on a team like this with reasonable vig. So basically, DraftKings thinks the Raiders are going to stink. I kind of thought the Raiders were going to stink. I was looking to play the Raiders under the eight, but you know they're in the um, mix for the whole Aaron Rodgers situation. And if they do get Aaron Rodgers, well, their season win number is probably going to go up to nine. So that is an added complexity, a whole lot going on with my Las Vegas Raiders. All right. I got to ask you about this, Steve. I know you're not a huge horse racing guy, but – you're the two-time Super Contest winner. This is the Even Money Podcast. We're primarily NFL, but we touch on the other sports as well, give you guys a little bit of insight. What is your reaction to everything going on with Bob Baffert and Medina Spirit and the doping scandal right now? Okay, first let me qualify. Of course, I am not a racing expert, but I am a betting expert. Uh, Medina Spirit, of course, um, all the results are final. And the horse can be disqualified, uh, not receive any prize money. But all those bets that were made on the Derby are final, of course, and aren't going to be changed. I can't help but think if maybe there's situations with horses that there's some substances that you're not allowed to use, others that you're allowed to use, but you can't use more than a certain amount. And maybe Bat Baffert and company have pushed the envelope, if you will, in terms of what they've done to help their horses perform well. And after something as public as this that comes out, 
I would think every horse he races going forward, at least for a while, is going to be squeaky clean, not have anything in their systems, no possibility of having anything that will help their performance. And because of that, all things being equal, if you ask me, I got to bet a yes, no on a Baffert horse, I would bet against that horse going forward in the Triple Crown, at least in the near future. I think that's a good point. I guess the one thing I think almost feels like a loophole I know people want the win for the stud fee and they want the win for the prize money. But if all the bets are final, it seems to me like you could just pump the horse for all kinds of performance enhancers, which, by the way, I would never do. I'm just saying. And, okay, they get busted afterwards. But if you and everybody else put a lot of money on the horse and the, and, and the results are final and you win your bets, it's almost like you're ahead of the game. Well, and that's the problem with horse racing is that there are talks of massive corruption, especially at the smaller tracks where the, you know, you can go ahead and have horses that are, are under the radar and the like, and you know more as the owner and you've got friends of friends that can certainly get you down. What was it, in Pulp Fiction where the fight was supposed to be fixed and Bruce Willis just went and bet on himself like eight times through a bookie. I mean, it's easy enough to get down. By the way, there's a pretty good documentation the way – literally you don't make the bet. You just make one phone call and a guy can get you down for whatever you basically own. And um, it makes you wonder about the sports betting. Yeah, that's a good point about horse racing. It's a good point about Baffert moving forward. That guy's hilarious. First he said that like somebody peed on hay and the horse ate hay. Now it's the vet rubbed something. I, I don't know. Um, Anything on NBA or NHL? we got a couple minutes left. You know, what's fascinating to me is it looks like the Lakers are heading for the play-in tournament as the likely seven seed because they're game, game behind Portland and they don't have the tie breaks. And yet the markets are still looking at the Lakers and they and the Clippers are the co-favorites to win the West, plus 250. Ross, I don't think I've ever seen this before. Not so much you got a seven seed to start off with, but now you got a seven seed. You're not even sure it's going to make the playoffs because of the new playoff system. And yet they're the co-favorite to win the conference. This is um, a very unique situation. I tell you what, a lot of sharp betters have lost a lot of money in the playoffs over the years, looking at LeBron James teams and how they played during the regular season. And then boom, he flips the switch as teams are three points better in the playoffs. Can he do it with the Lakers? I'm not so sure. So is there any way to bet it? Like, how do you bet against them? Circus Sports has a yes, no. Will they win the conference? So that's certainly a way that you can do that. I know I bet that a little while ago, uh, back when the Lakers, I think I played minus 280. They would not win the West. You have to lay more now. I think it's up to like minus 350. But um, the Circa does a great job here locally in Vegas, letting you bet not just on the yes, but letting you bet the no on all the teams as well. Next week, we will dive into the schedule. We'll tell you what items were actionable after Steve goes through it with a finely toothed comb. Is that the expression? Fine toothed comb? What does that even mean, tooth? What is their teeth of a comb? It's like the little like branches on the on the comb. Those are called the teeth? I never knew they were called yeah. teeth. I, I never thought about that expression until right now. I know this. <laughs> He's at Fezzik Sports. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. Please subscribe, either YouTube or whatever podcast app you use. You're definitely going to want to hear what Michael North says about the schedule on Thursday's Ross Tucker Football Podcast. And we are doing fantasy rookie running back ratings tomorrow on the Fantasy Feast Podcast. Definitely get in that DraftKings free-to-play NFL schedule 5k pool i think we're done here good luck everybody hope you guys win some money thanks for listening to the even money podcast make sure to also subscribe to the ross tucker football podcast the fantasy feast business of sports and the college draft all available at apple podcasts ross tucker.com or wherever podcasts can be found a lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100 Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it.
By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 